learned about the Sentinel through the book Paperbacks from Hell, which I reviewed last week, where it was described as a book made in the wake of The Exorcist while playing on the collapse of cities in the 1970s. Now, when in turn I learned that the novel had received a filmed adaptation, I figured it was worth checking out. The film puts its best foot forward as the film's credits have been a way of, hey, I know the moments from high-profile actors like Christopher Walken um, to more niche cult actors like Burgess Meredith, Chris Sarandon, who you probably recognize from The Princess Bride, Jerry Orbach from Law and & Order, and Eli Wallach from numerous Spaghetti Western films. Unfortunately, that leads to the film not being able to pay off on all of that. There are bits of the film's plot that works. The focus of the film is on Alison Parker, played by Christina Raines, a fashion model in New York who is dating successful lawyer Michael Lerman, who's played by Sarandon, and in a flip of the usual formula, Lerman wants to get married while Parker fears commitment. So, Parker's looking for her own apartment, while Lerman is looking for an apartment that they can share, all of which is set up with a nice montage of the two going apartment hunting separately, each looking for different things, with Parker selling for an apartment in an old brownstone. However, shortly after moving in, that's where things get weird. Parker's abusive, philandering father dies, and she hallucinates the time she tried to commit suicide after he beat her when she walked in on him having sexy times with two of his mistresses. She then collapses into a photo shoot, followed by a series of surreal and disturbing encounters with other tenants that may or may not exist. This meltdown gets the police involved in the form of two officers played by Wallach and Walken, as Ler turns out Lerman had been married before, and his previous wife had died under suspicious circumstances, and his mistress of the time had been institutionalized. It makes for what could, on paper, have made for dramatic, compelling points. Is Parker's apartment haunted, or is she being gaslit by her fiancé? And what's with the whole thing of the blind priest standing vigil in the fifth-floor apartment? The problem is, that whole part of the plot and the mysteries that go with it is undercut by a prologue showing a group of Catholic priests meeting in a church in Italy. It undercuts the question because it means that the church has some reason to be involved with what's going on in some form or another, and the audience is instead waiting to find out what that is, as opposed to knowing up front, or not knowing up front, whether this is supernatural or whether this is more mundane. Related to this is also a very poor use of religious imagery. As the film describes both the, the Divine Comedy of Dante and Milton's Paradise Lost as canonical works of Catholic theology and treats them as such in the film's plot. The thing is, the Divine Comedy is written by a poet who was not a member of the church, never was, and is as much to be as much a work of satire as anything else, um, with thinly veiled or not veiled at all versions of real life people from, well, you know, Florence and Renaissance Italy, Venice as well, uh, showing up in the various layers of hell. The use of Paradise Lost is even more egregious as that is a similar work, but it was also written by a Protestant and thus the Catholic Church would be even less inclined to include it as an actual doctrinal work of theology, or one with any theological weight. Ultimately, the film has its moments, but they're moments that don't quite have enough to make it stand out among other works of 1970s satanic horror. I had fun watching it, but it's not narratively strong enough to make for an engrossing story on its own, nor Donzo enough to make it worth watching in that regard either. I say it's worth watching on streaming if it's available, and if it were to come up in some horror blue way gray box set or your um double feature the Sentinel plus a better movie um sort of things, then I might find it a point in that collection's favor. But on its own, unless we're talking about getting like the big arrow digital criterion collection, um Film historian commentary, tons of bonus features treatment, not so much worth picking up a copy. Certainly not buying a digital copy on its own. And next week, we're not done with horror yet. Um, while we can, while we are returning to 
uh, the Nightfall Saga. It we happen to have appropriately timed things as John Paul Valley is taking on as the second Batman is taking on his first member of the Rogues Gallery, Scarecrow. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. And also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.